So this is about how to calculate terminal velocity. Now terminal velocity happens when air resistance is equal to the force of gravity, or if the force of gravity minus the air resistance equals zero. So the force of gravity is equal to the mass times g, the gravitational acceleration. And the air resistance is equal to the coefficient of drag, which is underlined just so just so that you don't get confused that C and D are two different things. That's just one coefficient of drag. Times the area, the cross-sectional area through which the object is moving through the fluid, such as air. And this could happen under underwater too, but then you would need to take into account the buoyant force. In the air, the buoyant force is not very important, so you don't really need to take it into account. But we have the coefficient of drag the cross-sectional area, the density of the air, not the object, the density of the air, and the velocity squared, which is the relative velocity. So basically, if the object is moving this way at 10 meters per second, then say there's a wind coming at 10 meters per second this way, the relative velocity would be 20 meters per second. So... The coefficient of drag is usually about 1. That's what it is for a flat surface. And for the most aerodynamic surfaces, it's about 0 0.4. And for the least aerodynamic surfaces, such as, a parachute, such as a parachute, it's about 2. So you can usually approximate things to be 1 unless they're specifically designed to be something else. And... Now, to actually calculate the terminal velocity, we set mg minus the uh, air resistance equation because it's the force of gravity minus the air resistance equals zero. Since this, the coefficient of drag times the area times the density times the velocity squared is the air resistance, we subtract that from mg equal and set that equal to zero. Now, we subtract mg from both sides. So we get, since we have a minus sign here, we get negative coefficient of drag times area times the density times the velocity squared equals negative mg. And to get rid of those negatives to clean things up, we can multiply both sides by negative 1. And that just gets the same equation but with positive terms. And then we solve for v squared because we're eventually trying to get to v. So we divide mg by the coefficient of drag, the area, and the density. So we get v squared equals mg divided by the coefficient of drag times the area times rho. And then we take the square root to get the actual velocity, the terminal velocity. And that's the square root of the mass of the object times g, the gravitational acceleration, divided by the coefficient of drag times the area times the density of the fluid, air. So, we can look at an example of a skydiver if he's laying flat versus if he's going straight down. And these numbers are slightly high, but it's to demonstrate that the air can slow things down. So, say he has some clothes that make his area bigger and the drag about one because he's about flat. We end up with a coefficient of drag of about one. The density of the air, it's about 1.2 kilograms per meter. That should be meter cubed. Meter cubed. It's about uh, 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed at sea level and decreases with higher height. So if he's higher up in the air, it's about one kilogram per meter cubed. And then his area is one meter squared. And we're going to make his mass 75 kilograms. And we use the, gra the gravitational acceleration. So the velocity is equal to the square root of mg divided by the coefficient of drag times the area times rho. That's the equation we just found over here. So we put in all our terms... 75 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second squared, and then each, the coefficient of drag, the area, and the density are all one in this example. 
So our final answer is 27 meters per second, which is pretty slow because in reality his area would probably be a bit less than one. His coefficient of drag might be a, less, a bit less than one also. But in a good approximation for him trying to slow down as much as he can would be about 27 meters per second. Now if he's trying to go as fast as he can, say he dips his head down into the air, his area decreases. From the previous example, example 1, we had 1 meter squared. Now his cross-sectional area has decreased to 0.1 meter squared because basically only his head is exposed to the moving air. We also decrease the coefficient of drag down to 0 0.5 because his head is curved and that will make him more aerodynamic. So we use a, a lower coefficient of drag and we still have the same density of air. We still have the same mass, 75 kilograms, and we still have the same g, 9.8 meters per second squared. So we use the same exact equation, plug in all our terms, and we get the square root of all our terms, the mass, the acceleration, the coefficient of drag, the area, and the density. I switched. I usually had density at the... Oh, I did have density at the end. Okay. That's fine. So our final answer is 121 meters per second, which is much faster than the 27 meters per second because with less area and better aerodynamics, he's able to move much faster. There's much less air resistance. Now, things that might change that might make this calculation more difficult would be if an object is rotating. So imagine a rotating coin here. And it's if it's moving straight down, the cross-sectional area can continues to change. So if an object is rotating, that can change the calculation. And also... As you go down in altitude, it gets the air gets more dense and the air gets thinner as you go up. So basically the density is less at higher altitudes, which means the terminal velocity will be higher at higher altitudes. But then as the air gets more dense as you get closer to the ground, the terminal you'll start to slow down. The terminal velocity will become less. Now lift also comes in into effect because if you have a little glider uh, basically if you're moving straight down your vy or downward velocity will be a certain amount but then if you have a glider that's creating lift and turning the energy into translational x direction motion your vy will be smaller because this motion will generate lift, which will help keep you up longer. And you'll approach the ground slower than you would have if you were simply dropping straight down. 